Hello everyone. Uh, welcome back to the Res Place for another chapel service. At this time of the year we'd normally be spending time getting ready for sports day and be out on the track or throwing javelins or uh, doing other things, jumping. Although this is not possible this year, the sports department is providing us with a virtual sports day in the last week of team. Uh, thanks to all their hard work, uh, we all will have an interesting and enjoyable alternative. I hope you enjoy. I've enjoyed participating in sport from an er as early as I can remember. It was initially football and cross country and then later uh, after school long distance events and marathons. I've got a box full of medals. It's all tattered metal box. Uh, not for winning but for taking part. These are my favourites. Two medals for completing the Comrades Marathon, running 88 kilometres between Durban and Peter Maritzburg in KwaZulu Natal, South Africa. The up run and then the down run. These are for completing five Ironman races, 106 kilometers that included 20 kilometers canoeing, cycling 98 kilometers, and then at the end of that, running a standard marathon. My best time for uh, doing that was just under 11 hours. And because I completed more than three, I have a number in perpetuity. Nobody can take my 127 number away. More recently, uh, my nephew and I completed the Three Lakes Challenge in four days, paddling Lake Barla in Wales, Lake Windermere, and then Loch Awe up in Scotland, paddling 43 miles in 10 and a half hours. And I got a surprise, this arrived in the post from the canoe, uh, British Canoeing Union. So what have I learned from what uh, some would say is complete madness? Some really good life lessons, I think. First is, prepare properly and be disciplined in your preparation. Enjoy the support of others in training, and especially if you've got a team around you. Run your own race at your own pace. Don't keep on looking back, you'll fall flat on your face. Or don't play to the crowd, the spectators. You might have the same consequence of falling flat on your face. Take sustenance along the way. I remember how good a bar of chocolate tasted after six hours of canoeing and cycling and just being given that energy boost to carry on. Keep going even when you feel awful. You will feel better when you get your second wind. Be determined to finish. Enjoy the medal. St Paul also uses the analogy of an athlete in a number of places when talking about faith. Here's one from his letter to the believers in Philippi. It's about being focused on the goal. I'm not saying that I have this all together, that I have it made, but I'm well on my way reaching out for Christ, who has so wondrously reached out to me. Friend, don't get me wrong. By no means do I count myself an expert in all of this, but I've got my eye on the goal where God is beckoning us onward to Jesus. I'm often running and I'm not turning back. So let's keep focused on that goal, those of us who want everything God has for us. If any of you have, have something else in mind, something less than total commitment, God will clear your blurred vision. You'll see it yet. Now that we're on the right track, let's stay on it. The message is simple in faith and life. Don't focus on the past. Of course, learn from it, but keep focused on the end goal. Getting through this term and year, encouraging one another along the way, taking in the right sustenance. One thing taking part in long distance events has taught me is to be stubborn. Actually, I prefer the word determined. Determined not to give up supporting big issues like opposing racism which the Black Lives Matter movement has given impetus to. Hopefully it will be sustained until significant changes are made going forward. 
determined to support the work done for the well-being of children throughout the world, whether school meals during the summer holidays or challenging child labour. The International Labour Organization estimates that a staggering 152 million children worldwide are still involved in child labour today. To continue to support and include those in the LGBT community. I'm determined not to give up on doing what I can, where I am, when I'm able for the well-being of the environment and our world. Achieving the goals that I want to achieve and we want to achieve. And inclusive of all of this, St. Paul encourages us not to give up on a closer relationship with God in Christ, doing things the right way, getting to the finishing line and enjoying the medal. Let us pray. Lord, as we come to the end of the year, give us the energy and enthusiasm to continue to run with determination the race that is set before us. Help us to continue to work through our personal challenges and to be just as determined to make a difference in the significant issues that face our world. Remind us to encourage one another, to work together wherever possible, and when we get tired, to find sustenance and encouragement in a God who renews our strength and sees us through to the finish. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The closing song for us to listen to is a protest song which was banned in South Africa when I was at school. It's sung by Joan Byers at a function for President Obama. I hope you enjoy it. Listen carefully to the words. We shall overcome someday. God bless you all. Mr. President, First Lady, your family, you are so much loved. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe that we Dr. King realized that nonviolence fight went far beyond the shores of this great country, went far across the sea to war that was being fought by God's children on both sides of that great fight. And he knew that he had to speak out against that, and he was afraid. He was very afraid. So we all raised our voices just a little bit louder and we said we are not afraid today we are not afraid today we
Thank you so much.